Investigative reporter Chris Horn looks at how drivers and families can handle this matter. Chris? Tom and Anita, it's difficult to give up your sense of mobility, independence, even dignity. Here's the advice from someone who faced that dilemma very recently. Before you're forced to yield and give up the keys, take control of the situation so you don't lose control behind the wheel. Steve Fogelgren of Hampton drove for more than 50 years until he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Your reaction time is slowed down tremendously. And so you can't, you can't drive as well as you used to be able to. You can't react. Fogelgren could feel his ability slipping away. It's an accident waiting to happen. Late last month, Fogelgren stopped driving and sold his car. I never told him not to drive, and we agreed to drive minimally, but I was not going to be the one to take away the keys. I didn't want to have to. He was wise enough and discerned enough to know there's too big of a risk. So now they coordinate trips with friends or Joan picks up the slack. How's her driving? It's terrible. <laughs> Joe Mason gets in her Chevy Impala several times a week, shopping, visiting family, and going to church. This is my means of transportation, how I get from A to B. Uh -huh. So this is very important to me. Good. One of the concerns that seniors have is they're terrified that someone is going to take away their driver's license. Have you been concerned about your ability to drive at all? Now that I'm getting up there, yes, mm -hmm. I, I am. So Mason signed up for AAA's car fit, where she got measured to make sure her steering wheel, seat position, mirrors, and other equipment are adjusted properly. The mirrors, was a, that was the biggest surprise to me. Um, and the headrests, it made it much a, a more comfortable ride. But at some point for most senior drivers, it's time to get off the road. There is not a magic age when it's time to give the keys up. In some people, it may be as early as in their early 60s. The, the biggest thing is the older drivers will typically have more trouble with lane changes, high-speed lane changes. Matt Pagels evaluates senior drivers when they are referred by their doctor or the DMV. His first step is to have them drive in familiar surroundings. Grocery store, family member's house, church, and then later on I might ask him to take me to their doctor's office. Pagels evaluates on average a dozen drivers a week. About 30% fail. I'm not successful. The way I describe that is uh, they're not safe to drive at all. Others will pass with limitations. Five or ten miles from home, no night driving, no interstate driving. AAA's best advice for senior drivers in advance of that fateful day Start thinking now about how you'll navigate the notion of no longer driving. You need to be in charge of that conversation. Don't wait until it's your children and your doctor and they're coming to you. Because when someone else makes the decision, it can get contentious. Some folks are very gracious about it. That's probably not the uh, norm, but that's, okay. that's the way it is. Why would anyone just receive a report from an expert telling them that they're not fit to drive? Why would they go drive? And we have made this story interactive for you with our new social news desk. We asked who should decide whether seniors are no longer fit to drive. Here are the results. 55% of you say a doctor should decide. That survey is on wavy.com and our Facebook page. We also have links to ride programs and other resources so that seniors can still get around after they give up the keys. Chris Horn, 10 on your side.